We are in this series called Soul Detox. Last week, I spoke on the title, The Restless Soul. If you missed that sermon, you can go back and watch it on YouTube. You can go back and watch it uh, and listen to it uh, in, in Spotify. You can go and listen to it in iTunes podcast. We are everywhere. I just want to show off our media team there for a minute. Come on, let's give a, give a big round of applause for the media team. Eh? They're doing a wonderful job. Usually, I get everybody here to clap for the people online, but can I get some big round of applause for the entire team here from the church online? There you go. People are, clap, people are clapping. There. I see claps. I see claps. It's coming in. That is great. God spoke to us last week. We are not a body with a soul but rather we are a soul with a body. The world has flipped it the other way around. Everything and anything that you experience is for your body. Any products to any shoes to any clothes to real estate to any business, anything and everything is for pleasing the flesh. But when God created us, the Bible says in Genesis that God created us as living souls, which means that his life came into us so that we will be a living soul. In order to protect that soul, God added this body. So this body is a shell for our soul. It's like the helmet for you. Right? Those who can't afford a great bike buy greater helmets. <laughs> Do you know that? You have the really cool helmet, even though you don't have a really cool bike, it's fine. Some people buy a helmet in faith and pray for a bike. That's, that's faith, huh? Great. This morning, I want to speak to you on this title. Soul Detox part, part 2 is going to be on the title, The Heavy Soul. The Heavy Soul. A heavy soul is smiling on the outside, but going through hell on the inside. A heavy soul is putting on a show, a performance on the outside, but going through so much on the inside. Generation of people are going through a lot of things in their life because they have this underlying condition of stacking up things that are untouched, that are unhealed, that are not spoken. And in fact, those things determine their decisions, but they don't even realize that those things are determining, determining their decisions in everything that they do. But they think they are fine because... It looks good on the outside. They're doing a show. They're doing a performance on the outside. Psalmist cries out, you know, I love David because he keeps talking to us. So he's one of the guys. He does say, hey, David. He doesn't say, hey, David. He says, oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. Right? Many times you would stand in front of a mirror. You know, sometimes I do this, you know, sometimes when I'm really, really tired and I've got a lot of work to do and I, and I go to the bathroom, wash my face, look at the mirror and say, Sam, Wake up, buddy. You can do this. Come on. I don't know how many of you have done it, right? I know some of our KCLC students, especially when, if we have classes or when we have classes on Monday morning, they're all like, mm, wake up. Come on, KCLC, wake up. No, no, I'm talking about the first hour. They're, they're active after the lunch. The psalmist says, why are you downcast, O my soul? Why are you so disturbed within me? In other words, it's sounding like the psalmist is saying, David is saying, hey soul, why are you bothering me? I want to be 
you know, strong. I want to be good. You know, I want to have, you know, uh, a really experience, experience the presence of God. But soul, why are you bothering me? Why are you so downcast? Come on, soul. Wake up, wake up. Come on, let's do this. And the psalmist is going through, you know, David has gone through various seasons in his life where he can sing the song because it was pretty depressing in certain seasons. In fact, he was hiding in caves. But many of us, even though we are not hiding in physical caves, we have created mental caves, emotional caves that we can walk into. But the, the problem is that we have a term for it now. The term is, can I have my own space? Hello? We call it, oh, he, he's, I'm just having my own space. It's okay to have your own space as long as your space is not a cave. Somebody shout amen. amen. If your space is with the presence of the Lord, if you are fired up in your space, if you are hearing God in your space, if you are in a space where it is you and the Lord and you are not depressed but you are just rather anointed, fired up and lit up in your soul, even though things around you is not so great but you are so lit up in your soul, that's a good space to be. But if your space is a cave where it's dark, if your space is a shell where you are just curled up on the inside, but you're doing a performance on the outside, then you got to you know, ask yourself, why are you so downcast, O oh my soul? Why are you so disturbed within me? The data shows, statistics shows, uh, not just in India, all across the world, in fact that, that you know, 90% of the entire population are going through a mild depression generally in life. And in fact, this depression has increased in the past 15 to 20 years. And when they researched why this has happened and why this, uh, you know, the depression has increased among people is that it was the timeline and the time internet was made available to public was the same. Now, I'm not blaming the internet. You know, we all have internet. In fact, you're watching this through internet, so don't just like, Pastor said it's the internet that's causing all this. Sign out. <laughs> but it's how we handle things. It's how we... So internet, the, the studies say that because of internet, we started accessing a lot of information, a lot of knowledge started coming, but then less communication started happening as well. We started bottling up things. We didn't, talk, you know, we didn't talk to other people. Today, more talk is happening to, hey Google. When you have a God that you can talk to, when you have a church family that you can talk to, when you have people around, that's why we have life groups and life groups is a heartbeat of our church because we don't want to be these consumers, Christian consumers, where we just consume everything in and we bottle up everything on the inside. When challenges come through, we need to open up to trusted friends and believers and the body of Christ because that's why God has put us together. God designed us that we thrive and survive our soul, not just body, our soul thrives and survive in a community setting. But I have a digital community. If you can say hello to somebody and have a long conversation behind the screen, but if you meet them in person and you're zipped, then we have a problem. Woo, I'm on fire today. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. See, these people would say amen online, but not in person. I don't know why. <laughs> Just kidding. Amen. Thank you. Heavy soul. Why are our souls so heavy? Our souls are heavy because of the hurts from the past. Lamentations 3, 19 to 20, it says, I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gal. I will remember them and my soul 
is downcast within me. People go down the memory lane of what happened in the past in their life and they put it in repeat mode and they have a lot of things that triggers them about the past and their soul gets heavier and heavier and heavier as they vividly remember the hurt from the past. It could be a lot, you know, a job that you lost in a really bad way and you still remember the hurt from it. It could be a friend that hurt you and you still remember it. It could be um, a relationship that ended really, really badly and it changed you who you are as a person and you remember it. Sometimes you think God let you down. God allowed certain things to happen in your life and you have resentment towards God. You have resentment towards God's word. You have resentment towards God's people. You have resentment towards the church because you remember something. You're hurt and still going through pain in your life because of some bad financial decisions that you have made in your life. And it has hurt you and it has hurt your family. You remember it. You remember some missed opportunities in your life. And those missed opportunities, you still go back and say, if only I made that choice, maybe my life would have been different. And you're still stuck in that missed opportunity. And every time you put yourself through this past, through this record, where you're constantly playing and replaying and slowing it down and playing it again and watching it again and again and again creates a heavy soul. And you are stuck in the past. God is speaking to somebody this morning. As we sang, He holds everything together. Your past your present, and your future. It's not, you know, the timeline that we have drawn for ourselves. God is beyond that timeline. God is beyond that timeline. You know, He can, he can put it all together in one scope and, and kind of reshuffle things in our life. For us, it's past and present and future. For Him, it's just you. He can see you with an entire scope of things that is going on in your life. And He is in absolute control of your life because He is God. He is God. Is it, is it possible to forget the past? Has anybody tried it? Has anybody tried it? No? Is it possible? Somebody asked me, um, somebody told me, like, I really, really want to forget the past. Then I looked at the person and said, well, I need to put you in coma at least for some few months. <laughs> or some serious head injury. <laughs> Is it physically possible to remember the, you know, forget the past? It's not. There's a saying, you know, um, forgive and forget. But biblically, if you look at it, we're called to forgive. There's nowhere it says you, 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 you ought to forget. But pastor, then what do we do? How you remember your past is important. How you remember your past is important. Yes, you will remember your past. It's not going to go out of your memory. But when you think about it, how you felt when you were hurt and how you're feeling now about it is very different. Because what has happened then to now is a process of healing. And the process of healing is something that should dominate our mind than the hurt. When you remember your hurt, it's not the hurt that should dominate your thoughts. 
What should dominate your thoughts is the healer who worked through your hurt and brought you to this place. Okay, let me demonstrate this to you. I did not plan this, but Ajay, can you join with me on stage right now? You, you can stand here. That would help. Now, Ajay, he's a very sporty guy. Very active. Great in badminton. Great in cricket. But, recently, he got hurt. <laughs> now, it's fine if I held Ajay here. I'm sure he's smiling under the mask. It's fine if I held him here. He's totally okay. It's fine if I touch him here. It's totally fine. I think his heartbeat is going faster now. <laughs> it's fine if I held these three things together. It's totally okay. But when I do <laughs> that, it scares him. Right? His soul could jump like, oh man, it's going to hurt. But in a couple of weeks' time, this is going to come off because right now, it's in the process of healing. So it's a, it's a chipped bone there. It needs to stay together. And the doctor has given a certain time for it to be there. And as time progresses, as the healing comes in, right? It's going to be healed and this is going to look different. And after it's healed, I can hold him like this. No issues. Every time when he looks at his little finger, because I'm sure it's not going to be in the same, same shape as it, how it was, because I, I remember I had a similar situation. And if you see this little finger is fine, but if you look at this, <laughs> you see that standing on its own? <laughs> that's, that's a previous fracture. That's a, that's a little bit of a cracked bone there. But it's healed now. It doesn't hurt anymore. I can slap it, touch it, do whatever I want to do with it. It doesn't hurt. But every time I look at it, I remember what happened. But I don't remember it in a painful way. I remember it in a healed way. It might not look the way it's supposed to be, but it's still great and functional. In fact, when I play the keyboard, it helps me to touch the, <laughs> the sus notes. You get me, Sam? So right now, it's still in the process. So when you think about your past, and if it's still not been able to touch it or it hurts you, means that it is not at healed. It's not at, the process is not at over. Or for some, you just didn't want anybody to know that you are hurt. So you didn't even want to put a band-aid on it. You didn't want to even start the healing process on it. You have just, you know, hidden it and walked around like this. I'm fine. It's okay. It's not getting hurt. But in here and in here, thank you, Ajay. In here and here, it's still hurting. How you remember about your past is the important part. Don't try to forget the past because you will forget the faithfulness of God if you forget your past. You will forget the faithfulness of the God who has healed you and set you free. I was down in the pit of my life, but my God lifted me. I was sinful, I was filthy, I was not even close to where God has brought me now, but it is my God who brought me up. Yes, people hurt me. Yes, I had a lost job. Yes, I had missed, fi missed opportunities. Yes, I made some financial uh, bad financial decisions. But in and through it all, God has healed me and brought me out. So I don't remember the hurt I remember the healer. Come on, somebody. Say amen. Say amen. When you think about your past, what do you remember? Is it still hurting you? Or do you remember the healing touch of the Holy Spirit? If it's still hurting you, then you didn't give it to God for Him to touch it and heal it. 
Oh, but it's so painful. I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want anybody touching it. Ow, ow, ow. I just want you to leave me alone. I just want to have my own space and have a cave and have my shelf. Just leave me alone. And this is where things start going wrong. When you say leave me alone to people, you need to watch out. Are you saying leave me alone God? Are you allowing the Holy Spirit to work in your life? Are you allowing the Holy Spirit to go into the depths of your soul where things that you have never shared with people outside, but when the Holy Spirit touches you and He brings it up in my mind to heal you and set you free from that, and if you say, no, 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 I don't want to go into that, then you are trying to skip your healing and hold on to your hurt. The reason many of us still struggling with a heavy soul is that you are married to your hurt. In fact, you have made your past as your identity and started enjoying the attention that it gives you. Oh, come on. And you have, you have said, if, if, if that hurt is not there, who am I then without it? Do you know that? That's a dangerous place to be. God has called you. God has set you free. God has a great purpose for your life. Scars tell a story. You might be ashamed of the wound, but when God heals you, those scars tell the name Jesus. It shouts out the name. He's the healer. He's the deliverer. He's the one who sets us free. Many of us are heavy with trouble in the present. Job 4, 5, it says, but now trouble comes to you and you are discouraged by what is happening right now. It strikes you and you are dismayed. We are going through situations in our life that we did not expect to happen. Trouble has come to you in the present. So your, heav your heart is heavy, your soul is heavy with trouble in the present. You didn't think life would turn out this way. You're probably, uh, you know, stuck in a situation, stuck in, in some friendships, stuck in some manipulative uh, relationships. You are stuck in some manipulative, um, you know, emotionally blackmailing marriages. You are stuck in some relationships. You are stuck in some jobs that is not treating you well. You are stuck in some financial decisions of the present. And it's killing you. It's, it's toxic. It's toxic. God wants to bring you out. God wants to bring you out. Some relationships have been going on for so long where they have constantly manipulated you. If you didn't do this, I would kill myself. I would do this. My life would go back to square one. This and that. And those emotionally, you know, blackmails have been going on and happening in friendships, happening in marriages, happening in families, and a lot of things. And it's become a toxic thing. And your heart is heavy. You're in that relationship because you don't know how to get out of it. You feel trapped. You pray that the Lord will deliver. You pray that the Lord will change the person's heart. And you got to speak up to the Holy Spirit. You got to speak up to people around you because you need to ask for help. That is why church is important. Holy Spirit is listening to you. God is listening to you. But also you need to speak up Call for help. If you're going through domestic violence, it's been going for years, call for help. It's important that our communities learn this. Call for your pastor. Call for good spiritual friends who will not influence you in a bad way, but they will take reasonable godly stand with you, talk with you, walk with you through that process Speak up. You might be blackmailed saying that if you speak up, that you will, f you know, face the worst. But actually, you are going through the worst because you're not speaking up. That's the truth. That's the truth. 
I hope and I believe that I'm speaking to somebody today. May the Holy Spirit give you the strength to speak up. It's toxic. Some soul are heavy because you're anxious about the future. Mark 14, 33 and 34, Jesus began to be deeply distressed and troubled. And Jesus prays this prayer and he says, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. He knows what was coming on the cross. Jesus being fully man and fully God, he experienced anxiety. He ex so when you say, God, I'm anxious, you have no idea what I'm going through. You can never say that to God. Jesus would say, well, well, buddy, have you tried cross? <laughs> have, you, have you been in moments away from the cross? Let me teach you a little bit about anxiety, eh? Knowing that you're going to be nailed. Knowing that your body is going to be ripped into pieces. Knowing that every single blood and water is going to be poured out to change the trajectory of the world. As a man, he was anxious. Jesus says in his own words, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Many people are going through this. You're so scared of the future. You're so scared of tomorrow. Your heart is so heavy. Your soul is so heavy to the point of death. Fear of losing job. Afraid that you can't get it all done in time. Your debt is growing and you don't know what to do. Everywhere you turn, your past, your present and your future, something is weighing you down. And COVID-19 is just a cream on top of an entire hot chocolate of problems you already had. It's just a, it's just a cream on top now. What has happened is that COVID has just... You know, hidden, if you order a really nice hot chocolate with cream on top in, in, in um, any cafe or Starbucks or, or Costa or Upper Room Cafe, um, that, that the cream is so much on the top that you don't see the drink on the inside. And many people, we look at COVID and, we, and, and, and COVID has covered our entire cup of problems. And it has given us this, this focus on, on having a global problem. We're all in, united in our problem now. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? We're all like, you call anybody in America, same cream on top of their hot chocolate, it's COVID. You call anybody in Japan, same cream on top of their hot chocolate. So we're all united in our problem and our focus. So uh, for a minute... We've decided, okay, we, we're not going to think about my debt. Nobody's going to job because of COVID anyway. Ah, oh, it's COVID, guys. Oh, it's COVID. Why are you so, oh, it's COVID. Now we got a term, COVID, to cover up our entire individual problems. And we are unitedly singing the song. COVID, COVID. Right? For students, the pain and the problem is the exams. Their hot chocolate is, is, is what is hurting them is the exams. And you're praying, I want my cream back. Welcome back, Omicron. Welcome back, Delta. Welcome back, Delta Cron. They're like, yeah, it's back. Now I don't have to worry about offline exams. Now I don't have to worry this and that. And, uh, it's COVID. It's COVID. It's COVID. But the Holy Spirit is not looking at your cream on top. Even when COVID is going on, He's looking at the bottom of your cup. COVID comes, COVID will go. But when the cream is gone, the hot chocolate is still sitting there. Now we get back to think, oh my goodness, COVID is gone. What excuse do I use now? What excuse do I use now? 
God is talking to everybody, hey, I want to heal you. I want to set you free. I want to give you my word, which will guide you through your problems, which will help you to come through. Wherever you turn, there is a problem. You don't have to live with a heavy soul. That's why the psalmist says, you know, verse 42, verse 5, chapter 42, verse 5, he says, Why are you so downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? And the second part of the verse, he says, Put your hope in God. I love that. I love that. I love that. If I could just slap myself some days where I feel so downcast and look at the mirror and say, put your hope in God, buddy. You're not doing this. When sometimes, you know, when they announce that there's going to be a lockdown again and I said, mm, I was just getting started. The church was just getting started. And back to lockdown. And God reminded me, in this and through this all, He is still at work. Put your hope in God. For I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. When you are remembering your past, when you are troubled in your present, and when you're anxious about your future, can you openly and loudly say this, even if you look crazy, can you loudly say it? Because when you loudly say it, your physical ears hear it. Whatever your physical ear hears, you process it in your mind. So whenever you're feeling too much and going on too much in your head, the best way to get it off your head is that just get up and say, Hey, Sam, put your hope in God alone. Everybody like, what's going on with you? Now I'm just talking to myself. I'm talking to my soul. Talking to yourself is a little bit crazy. <laughs> but talk to your soul and say, put your hope in God. Look at yourself in the mirror every day and say, put your hope in God. For I will yet praise Him. In other words, I will still praise Him. I'm still about to receive my healing, but I will still praise Him because He's my Savior and He's my God. And if you can keep reminding, it's when you jump out of your own head. If you stay inside your own head, it's going crazy for you. But if you speak it out, it snaps you. It says, put your hope in God. Put your hope in God. Because you still have a Savior. And He's your God. Keep praising Him. Keep praising Him. Keep praising Him. I know it's crazy. I know it's anxious. Keep praising Him. I know this, the, the assignment you need to submit and the exams that's coming up, it's, it's, it's scary for you sometimes, but keep praising Him. I know the financial burdens that you're carrying and, and when COVID goes, how things are going to be, you don't know when the cream is taken and you still got a cup full of hot chocolate, but still, He's your God. Keep praising Him. Keep praising Him. Keep praising Him. That's when you will really raise a hallelujah. That's when you really raise a hallelujah. It's not just singing the song, I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. But the enemies are not outside. I have 10 enemies in my head and they're all called Sam. Do you know that? Raglan has another 10 enemies in his head and they're all called Raglan. And they all sound like him. And they tell him that you can't do this, you can't do that. And we all go through this. And we have ourselves against us, ourselves speaking against us to downcast our soul and make it heavy. But when you raise up and say, hey, all you raglans, hey, all you samps, my hope is in God alone. That's what's going to change you. Tell your soul. Remember God's faithfulness in the past. Like I said, if you can remember your hurt, but if you can remember how faithful has God been beyond your hurt and how he, has, he healed you, then you become faithful about your past. Remember God's faithfulness in the past. Lamentation 3, 19 to 23 the full verse, it says, I remember my affliction and my wandering. 
Many of us, we remember our wandering. You know, we all had days of wandering away from God. The bitterness and the gal, I will remember them and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this, this is what we need to do. Yet this I call to mind and therefore I have hope because of the Lord's great love. We are not consumed. We are not consumed by our thoughts. Don't let your own head consume you. Don't let your own mind consume you. Don't let the lies of the devil consume you. Because the compassion of the Lord Jesus Christ will never fail you. Will never fail you. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For His compassion will never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Every day, God pushes that reset button and gives a fresh grace, a fresh start. His mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. When you go through troubles in the present, cry out to God. Cry out to God. Psalm 142 verse 2 and 5 and 6 it says, I pour out my complaint before Him. Before Him I tell my trouble. You know what this is? This is speaking out your problems and letting God listen to you. Basically, they call it therapy in psychology. Yeah, okay. But the psalmist already had his own therapist. The psalmist already had a way of handling this. He says, I pour out. Listen to this. Many of us, we don't pour out our problems. We pour it in, back into our problems. It's like taking our own problems and pouring it in. Now, let me, let me, t let me tell you something. And, and this, this illustration, some of you, especially Indians, you would connect with this. When your parents tell you to go take a shower... And you just don't want to do it. But yet, your mother is standing outside, listening, if you are pouring the water. And I know many people in the Indian civilization has taken a cup of water and poured it on the floor for the sound effect. Sometimes you take it and pour it back into your bucket. And you take it and pour it on the floor. If you have done it. If you're still doing it. Sometimes you just run the shower and you sit in the toilet with your phone. Thinking that everybody, oh, finally he's taking a shower. A lot of us are faking it until we make it. And then when you come out of the shower, you've just watered your head and washed your face. And it gives you like, ah, oh, okay, good, good. <laughs> I hope this illustration made a lot of people, I know you are laughing behind those screens. Because I see a lot of smiles here. Yes, Ivan, God have mercy. <laughs> We are trying to fake it until we make it. We are trying to pour our own problems back into ourselves instead of actually pouring out to God. Verse 5 says, I cry to you, O Lord. I say, you are my refuge. You are my portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry, for I am in desperate need. Let me tell you something. God can handle it. God can handle it. Whatever that you can't handle, God can handle it. God can handle the depths of your soul. I'm going to bring this to a close. The final point is, trust in God's power for your future. Trust in God's power for your future. 
Hezekiah, king of Judah, he says in 2 Chronicles verse 32, 7 and 8, he says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or be discouraged because of the king of Assyria and the vast army that is with him. For there is a great power with us than with him. With him is only the arm of the flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. With him, the enemy, the devil, he only has the arm of the flesh. But with God, he's the one who's going to give us help and he will fight our battles. That's who we have on our side. So tell your soul, whenever the enemy is trying to hurt you, emotionally, in your head, in your heart, physically, because a lot of emotional pain leads to physical pain. And that's what the enemy wants to see. That's what the enemy wants to hear. That's what the enemy is rejoicing over. But you got to pray and you got to tell your soul and you got to remem remember yourself and remind yourself that he is just an army that is armed to hurt the flesh. But what God is doing is that he is helping me in my soul on the inside. He is helping me to fight my battles on the inside. And I will trust him because God has the power over my future. God has the power over my future. I'm going to bring it to a close. Remind your soul. Remind your soul. Greater is he who is within you than the one who is with the world. Greater is God who is within you than the one who is in the world. The same Holy Spirit that resurrected Jesus Christ from the dead is alive in you. If your God is for you, who can be against you? Why are you so downcast, my soul? Put your hope in the Lord. If you are hurt and heavy by the things that happened in the past, remember God's faithfulness because God is healing you. If you're heavy with the trouble in the present, cry out to God. Don't cry within yourself. Pour it out. Don't pour it back in. Sometimes people give you negative comments. Oh my goodness, is that what the doctor said? That's just going to be crazy. That's, that's not going to work out. We have, and they will give you more examples of failures than testimonies. Walk away from those people. They are not helping you to pour out your soul to God. They are helping you to take your own troubles and pour it back in. With this time, it's even more worse. You need people around you who speaks life into you, who will speak God's word into you, who will speak faith into you. That's life groups. Because it gives you life. When we go through trouble, life group, it pours out life into you. It gives, makes you alive in Christ Jesus. As life group members, we stand together and say, hey, God is still healer. He, it doesn't, God, you know, God won't become a healer after you're healed. He's already your healer even while you're waiting for your healing. He's your healer while you're going through the process. While you're going through your pain. And we speak that in Jesus' name. We speak that in Jesus' name. We speak that in Jesus' name. So present troubles, pour it out to God. Pour it out to God's people as well. The ones who can lift up your faith. Not to everybody. This is the problem. We say everything to everybody. And people don't know how to handle it. When you find a mature, godly, faithful, word-obeying person, speak to them and they will enrich your soul. They will walk with you. They will pray with you. They will stand with you. But God is the one who's going to bring healing. When you're anxious about your future, trust in God's power for your future. Let me tell you something. God is faithful in the past. He's still good in the present and he's with you in the future.
can we can we just stand up and wherever that you are watching from can you just raise your hands to God if you're not able to stand it's okay you can just raise your hands wherever wherever you're from and say can you repeat this after me can you repeat this after me as I say it I want you to boldly declare right when we did the word confession say God is not done with me yet the best days are right in front of me and this is why because God is about to do something amazing supernatural profound in your life only he can do only he can do so so we're gonna confess it out in faith we're gonna confess it out in faith we're gonna confess it out in faith can you say it out loud with me church are you ready when you say it out loud your ears will hear it your mind will hear it and when you hear it you know those lies will be cancelled in the name of Jesus and you're gonna repeat after me it with full of faith all right this is not my promise this is the promise from God's Word all right here we go three two one go God is faithful in the past good in my present with me in the future let's say it one more time God is faithful in my past God is good in my present God is with me in my future come on let's do that one more time again loudly God is faithful in my past God is good in my present and God is with me in my future now this time you're gonna say your name you're gonna add your name to this so for example I'll say Sam God is faithful in your past Sam God is good in your present Sam God is with you in the future and this time we're gonna do, say it together I'm sure these words are coming on the screen so why don't you add your name close your eyes lift your hands and say this one more time one two three go Sam God is faithful in your past Sam God is good in your present and Sam God is with you in the future <laughs> amen in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name 